there's the vice president, Dr. Baumir. You can see him uh, on our screens together with the wife, shaking hands after that uh, seminal speech for him where he laid out his vision uh, for this country. And he ends by making the point uh, that uh, as far as he's concerned, this year's elections is fundamentally a choice between the future, he says, and the past. He says, we've, we've asked ourselves, we need to ask ourselves a few questions, he says. If you want someone you can trust to come up with innovative and impactful ideas to transform Ghana, then he says, it is him. Well, he's laid out his vision and made his case. What do you make of that? And I have Winston uh, Amwa with me in the studio. And I, I must say, sincere apologies for that terrible uh, connection. The sound quality from source was bad. I mean, we tried to fix it. Uh, it was measurably difficult to do so. There was circumstances beyond our control as were taken from a source that was provided to all media houses. And that why you saw that struggle there with that connection to the ground uh, in terms of the sound quality. Winksing, so here we have it. Uh, we speculated, we anticipated. You've had it now. Did it meet your expectation? Well, I like some of the, I mean, I like uh, a lot of the things he said. There are some that um, I disagree, but of course it's not all about me. Um, I like the bit about the private sector playing a major role in infrastructure development. Now, these are things we've talked about. We've talked about the fact that it's obvious government cannot do a lot of the things. It's obvious that a lot of our roads uh, need to be developed and told. Okay, so um, many of us were uh, against, for instance, the removal of road tolls. We said that that should be maintained and in fact even should be increased under certain circumstances because if you have major world-class roads, you'd have to tow them to make money. So, I mean, that's something that it's important. We've also talked about, um, you know, he tells us, for instance, how he intends to go about taxation, for instance. He wants to have a flat rate for a lot of, uh, you know, the SMEs and uh, private businesses that would occupy 98% of it. Uh, I didn't hear the percentage that he wants to give us a flat rate. I think that's something that uh, would come up when, you know, discussions are held uh, further. He's talked about wanting to have, uh, you know, not more than 50 ministers for me. That's a good thing. I mean, the good thing about this election is that now we're hearing John Mahama had talked about not more than 60 ministers. He mm -hmm. talks about not more than 50 ministers. And so we, we, we're getting to a scene where uh, all of them are committing to lean governments. And for me, that's the most important thing. On the whole, on the whole, you, I mean, earlier we we're talking about the fact that he cannot come and pretend as if he's not, you know, uh, been part of a government. Mm -hmm. Yes, he's part of a government. He's talked about what they have done. Uh, some of the things I rehash, a lot of the things I rehash of what we already know mm -hmm. so when it comes to all the things they've done. Uh, but when it comes to the vision, on the face of uh, all that I have heard, looks like a good vision, but we will begin to do the analysis from tomorrow. And so from tomorrow on the Super Morning Show, we'll have a lot to say about what these yeah, things are. And, and the fundamental question we were asking ourselves at the beginning of this, when we were told that this was a speech to create that departure, between himself and his current boss. Did he deliver that? And there are a few things he said that sort of emphasizes that point, because we're told to expect that today he will, he will, he will show us that he's different in policy and in action. Then a few things. One, the most controversial uh, tax handle currently, which the government had asked the ECG to implement, was a 15% on VAT. This was what he said about that. He said, the new policies that I am proposing to implement in 2025 will give us a fiscal space to eliminate some taxes, such as VAT on electricity. He says, if still on the books, in, in other words, he's saying he will abolish the 15% on VAT if it's still on the books, if it wins uh, in 2025. But you see the way he puts it. Fiscal space. He puts it within the fiscal space. Question. Right, and that to give fiscal space to eliminate some taxes, you create a. In essence, saying I want to create a fiscal space first. Yeah. When I create a fiscal space, I will abolish the fifteen percent on electricity, if it's still on the books. As we see tonight, government has written to ECG and Netco to tell them to suspend yeah. the plan implementation. Right. So, so that's one. The most categorical for me. But 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 that point yeah, also. That point. Yeah, that point. Mm. If. Now, if you're able to create fiscal space, that's a condition, yeah. which we say will be sufficient condition to implement it. 
Mm. I don't think we need a sufficient condition. Tell us, you want to abolish it, and that's the end of it. Mm. And so he's talked about a lot of things. And, and, and let me just chip this in before you go on mm-hmm. to your point, because he also talks about how he thinks that government should not be buying a lot of things. They should be leasing, leasing. things. I want to know. I want to see the figures. Not just say, so for instance, <coughs> would it be cheaper for government to lease? Would it be cheaper for government to buy? Let's appreciate these things. I mean, I'm sure over the five-year period you want to lease it, how much is that going to cost you? Um, the wear and tear, who's going to take care of it? All of these things are things we can actually check and we can do the analysis later on. If it's cheaper, why not? Yeah, and then he also makes the point, and this was very categorical, that the e-levy will be abolished yeah. under him. He says he will abolish the e-levy. Um, and, and for me, this was the most categorical he's ever been on, in essence, saying, well, I disagreed with my own government on this. They did this without my knowledge or well, without my blessing, without my blessing. And if I get opportunity as my own man, I will abolish it. Because what's the point? He's a, he's a chair of the economy management team. Currently, as we speak to NIAs, as we speak to E Levy is still on our books. You've paid today when you, when you transferred yeah. your, your uh, momo. But the man who is a chair of the economy management team, who is a vice president, who still sits in cabinet, who still chairs it, says, if I get opportunity to become president, I will abolish it. He's telling you very loudly that I did not support this when it came to cabinet and there was a debate. At the economic management team, if it did, and I expect that there's a huge tax handle like this, would definitely have come to the economic management team. I chaired it, and somehow I was still overruled. How? That screams a lot. When he, when he makes that, that yeah. declaration for a policy that is still being implemented, the vice president says, when, when you give me the chance, I will abolish it. But he says the tone at the top, didn't he? When he says, well, I am the driver's mate now, yeah. and I'm looking for the money to be my own man, and when I get my, that authority, um, I will abolish something that is currently so, being implemented I mean, under I, my I, watch. I, 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 I see it this way also. And so the vice president, when he was talking about his um, tax system, tax reform, uh, talks about how uh, it's estimated that, I mean, how much we do not get to collect is in excess of some 13% of GDP. That's over 20, about $24 billion, over 240 billion Ghana cities. Mm. Okay, so he's talking about putting in place measures to be able to collect all of these. And that's why he's introducing a flat rate for SMEs and all of that. And we have said all the time, uh, you know, that where there's a favorable tax regime, people do not avoid or people do not evade. So where I, I hear him saying, this is what I intend to do. And based on that, so when he creates fiscal space, now E-Levy, uh, he, he wants to create a fiscal space of, for instance, 3% of GDP. And if we're looking at GDP for uh, 2024, which is expected to... Uh, be about total uh, output, I thought to be about some one trillion, then three percent you're looking at some 30 billion. Currently, E Levy will be raking in less than three billion Ghana cities. So that means that if you do all of these things, you would have enough revenue, okay, you have enough space and would not need E Levy. He's talked about a lot of cost, uh, cost cutting measures, he's talked about running a lean government, he's talked about other things which he believes would help the government. So all of these things will lead to the abolishing of the e-levy. But this is the point also. Mm -hmm. The vice president has consistently shied away from the e-levy conversation. And that would give an indication that he may not have been in support of it. But of course, um, it it, it wouldn't have made sense earlier to go out there to say, I am not in support of it. His action today would tell you, would suggest, you can reasonably infer, that he was not in support of it. And some of the things that he's not in support of he wants to say, he, he's, he now says, I would abolish them. But this is the other point also. In doing so, because he's talking about creating space, cutting down a lot of things, which would free a lot of expenditure, that would make sense. Because mm-hmm. if you have all of these things, then you can move on and say, I don't need to, for instance, burden people with a 15% VAT on electricity. No, but that, 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 that particular intervention, he says, he will implement if the 15% is still on VAT in 2025, raises fundamental questions. As we know, it was part of the IMF program. 
um, proposals that we put before the IMF. And this program is different from what we used in the past yeah. when the IMF dictated to us and we had to negotiate. This is bring your own program. Tell us what you want to do to achieve these set targets, fiscal targets, et cetera. And then we discuss if indeed they will deliver on that, then you go ahead and implement. So in other words, a 15% VAT is what government went to the IMF with. Now, it begs the question, it must have come through cabinet. It did. It must have gone through the economic management team, which he chairs. It must have. Let's assume he didn't even go to, the, to that. It must have come through cabinet. He definitely was in cabinet when he saw this um, particular one go through, right? Um, before it was passed. People ask the question, but why didn't you do enough to stop it there? Why wait till 2025 when a lot of people would have suffered as a result of that, possibly drag the more people into poverty because they are paying 50% on VAT, et cetera? When that question is asked of him, and that question will be asked tomorrow, I'm sure you'll be asking that question yes. on the Super Morning Show, on, on PMS, I'll be asking, what, what, what's the most, it's a difficult question, but what's the most plausible answer to that? Be, 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 because I'll be asking the question. You don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to answer the question. <laughs> but, but, that, but, that is, but that's, but that's, that's a big one. Yes. Because th this is something that the government went to the so, IMF yeah, so with. I, I mean, I can, I, I can actually join you in... I mean, adding further to that and more saying, questions to more it. questions to that and saying, so at what point in time did you realize that this was a bad one? Was it when he was going to parliament? Couldn't you have done anything to stop it? Is it going to be business as usual to say I was the driver's mate and I wasn't the man in charge? And so now I want to do this. Well, let's see what the response and will be. And it's also fair then to ask, okay, so because of what he says about e-levy that he abolished and the conclusion there is very obvious that I, I, I didn't support this when it came to cabinet and the economic management team. It's fair to really ask him, okay, so we understand you're not the boss, so you don't have the final say. You can scream and kick all you want. If the boss said, that's what I want, eventually you have to play ball or you resign, correct? Yeah. Okay, so you stayed in. If you stayed in, we want to, so what did you do to oppose it? And, and how, how far did you go? When, especially in the, especially in the case of the 15%, because it was our proposal, when that document came before cabinet, did he see it? What did he do specifically to oppose it and to raise the challenges this will pose uh, to the, the people? Or this was something that was sneaked in in the end? I mean, we, those are questions did, that... Did he, did, he for instance, did he, for instance, inform the president when he told the president? Because he's the driver's mate, so he mm -hmm. would have discussions with the driver. Yeah. Was his argument solid enough to have convinced the president? Did he propose some of the things he's proposing now to the president that we can actually do these mm. and create enough fiscal space? So you want to know well, whether all of these things happened mm. and were they solid arguments? Okay. Did the president refuse all of these? I, I, want, to take, I want to take us right now to the uh, premises of the UPSC where Dr. Bamia just finished addressing the country. I want to bring in my colleague, Kojo Brace, who's having an interaction with the Director of Communications for the MPP, Ms. Ahiaba. That if we make Baumia the president, this Mineral Development Bank will come in and will give us the opportunity to be able to exploit and leverage our resources for our benefit. But, but you agree with me that the same happened with the $1 million per constituency, sources of, or the, the sources of revenue funds. So it's right we have to find out where are the funds coming from. We have to understand it from now to be able to make a good judgment. Well, if you keep asking that question, then I can, I can tell you that you have doubt in your mind about what is possible. It is possible. You must have the right dream, and he has a doing this, and you agree that having a, development, a mineral development bank is a good idea. And if it's a good idea, we have the minerals, we can leverage our minerals to generate the revenue to be able to do that. But the one, one million dollar per consensus was a good idea, but you couldn't do it. Well, those are two different things, and these are two different leaders who are uh, pointing forward with a new vision, and we believe that with this, look, is it the one million one constituency. People keep saying that it wasn't, it didn't materialize, but it did materialize. It, it only didn't materialize in the form people expected. The people were thinking that one million would be given to the MP or to a constituency, but it was managed through the special initiative ministry to create and invest in infrastructure projects. Like that what? Was done. Oh, but you are aware of all the, the special. Those those KVIPs are still they're not uh, uncompleted. Yeah. You are the, you are the journalist. You have go and investigate and find the result. I told you, you know about the one, uh, one constituency, one ambulance. It's part of that. That is there. So let's talk about it. If there are challenges, let's talk about it. But the initiative was carried out, and I think that we can intensify and make sure that initiative continues to help. But 
it is nothing to compare with a new vision that uh, Baumia is bringing, which is to create a mineral development bank to help us leverage and benefit as a country from our mineral resources. Richard, I'm grateful to you, sir, for coming. Well, so let's uh, bring in the, the trades, uh, th those people who are involved in the business world. And uh, uh, let me bring in someone who is really, when it comes to importation, it plays a key role there. How are you, sir? I'm good. Why? You don't know the name? Oh, no, no, no. I know. I just want us to go straight to, to this conversation. Now, you heard him talk about the ports, how they want to make business. Uh, they want to it's uh, Kojo Brees uh, having an interaction uh, with the CIBID who represents the importers and uh, exporters there. And you want to join us uh, at, at 9 p.m. tonight, but also on the Super Morning Show tomorrow. Tomorrow, yes. Um, we have a great conversation. We will, in detail, in depth, review everything that he has said. And um, yeah, so join us. Uh, you know, he's talked about, uh, I've just been looking at the speech um, from around page 38 to about um, 70, he talks about his vision. So more than 30 pages talking about his vision. Yeah. We want to uh, you know, analyze all of it in, in detail, look at the feasibility or otherwise of it. So um, that's what we'll be doing tomorrow on the Super Morning Show. Okay, uh, you want to join Wingstein because one, one of the things we'll definitely be doing yeah. is fact checking. Sure. Um, because a lot has been said tonight that uh, is begging for that. Baumia himself believes in, in the importance of fact. So we'll do that also. Uh, PM Express in uh, 30 minutes, under 30 minutes, we'll also be uh, beginning to dissect this a bit more. We'll look at this from uh, the point of view of his own people to digest a bit more of what he had said, but also analyzing uh, the, the messaging. Sometimes the, f the form is more important than the substance. In this case, both were equally important. They, he needed to show us in what he says and how he said it, his body language, even the way he was dressed, to show that this, I am different from you know, the man I've served. We will analyze the, the soft bits too when, when he joined us on PM Express. And his relationship with the, with the finance minister was, was one that I was watching out for, especially when he categorically said- He didn't see the finance minister, did you see him? I, I didn't see him there too. Uh, maybe he was there, we, we haven't no, seen no, him. No, that's what I said, I didn't yeah, see him. I didn't there. see him too. Yeah. 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 But, but, but I, I, I had him mention the finance minister one, not name, not by name, but by designation. And he was thanking um, the economic actors who have helped to improve the economy in the midst of the crisis. Do you know who he thanked? Go ahead. He thanked the governor of the central bank. Yeah. He was clear about how the governor of the central bank, and he says the criticism they received is unfair. Do you know who else has received criticism? And they said he should leave his job and party folks come you know, and gunned by gangs. You know who? Ken? Well, you know him. He, he didn't say that was unfair. In fact, he didn't mention him at all. There's something he said, though. He mentioned him once. And when he was mentioning him, in the, in the context of emphasizing what he, as an individual, had done. And I'll read it, and then we'll end. I know tomorrow, this is something that you, you touch on also. He says, so when we assumed office in 2017 as vice president, I made a decision with the blessings and support of the president to focus on the critical but underdeveloped systems that would expand the economy, improve systems, and create jobs through digitalization. Therefore, as the finance minister, therefore, as the minister for finance oversees the budget, into bracket, fiscal policy, and the governor of the central bank also focused on monetary exchange rate policy, I focused on the complementary data and systems. So this is it. You know, you're looking at an economy. You're looking at the fiscal. That's the finance minister. Mm -hmm. You're looking at the monetary. That's the governor. And you're looking at a complementary system. Mm -hmm. The complementary is supposed to complement these. What? How did the complementary role complement these? And how did the complementary role lead us to where we are today? A lot of things to talk about. A, a lot of things to talk about. And, and and he creates that clear distinction between what I did. And what the finance minister did, and what the Bank of Ghana well, did. You know, these are. And, and there's, there's, there's a lot to really unpack. There's a, there's a lot, there's a lot I, I have to see, but I'll say it tomorrow. You hold on to that. <laughs> but, but yes, I mean, you, you can trust that we'll get into this a bit more. And the undertones are very, very clear um, because of what we know happens in the grapevine and, yeah. of course, behind closed doors. But he's laid out his vision. Did it convince you that he is different?
Did he convince you that he has a vision that is not the same, that he's, he's, he's really unique and that he is his own man now? You can engage that on our many social media platforms. PM Express in 30 minutes. Join me then.